Hello, and welcome back to Comic Vantage. So for today's episode, I am bringing you the part two of my long box that I picked up at uh, one of my LCS's clearance sales. And I got an entire long box of comics. Each book ran me about 40 cents a piece, maybe a little less. And if you haven't seen it yet, this is the box I am talking about. It does not fit in the frame. I've already done part one, so I went through about half of this box, maybe a little less. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of books still left to go through in here. And the way I'm looking at this thing, it might even break down to be a three-parter, depending on how long this video runs. So I'm going to start pulling out stacks at a time. Showing you what I got. Actually, some fun stuff in this thing. Nothing that'll break the bank or, you know, be overly excited about, but a lot of good, fun books. So, let's get started. Actually, there are a few that I have already bagged and boarded. Let's start with those. And these are some books that I had for spec. So, a profit number one. Now we all know this book, this uh, story has already been optioned. Uh, I believe it's a movie coming out. I'm not sure. And it should be on Netflix. Let's see what else. And <laughs> I found two of them, both in absolutely gorgeous shape. So I could not pass those up, you know, 40 cents a piece. Also picked up a brigade number one. Everything that Liefeld put out on Image uh, in the early days has now become a spec book because we don't know what is going to be coming out because in his entire library of Image titles has gotten picked up. So that's just in case, along with this one, Supreme Number One. Look at that, it's actually a gorgeous cover. This was his take on a Superman type of character. Pretty cool. And then also that I found... A Wildcats number two with the coupon still intact. I'm a sucker for this book. I absolutely love it. Every time I see it, I usually end up buying it just because it's gorgeous. And man, this just brings back memories of buying this back in the day. And the next one I picked up is a G.I. Joe number 60. And you're all like, hey, what's so special about this book? This book, the cover is actually a Todd McFarlane cover. Really hard to tell because this is very early work, but this is a Todd McFarlane cover. Nice. All right, let's get into some of the other just fun books that I picked up. I picked up this cool Envision Director's Cut. I've seen this around, never read it, and I forgot to give it a shot, you know? What the hell, for 40 cents. Also picked up a nice run of Swords of the Swashbucklers. And this is from Marvel's Epic Line. These were their creator-owned titles. And, uh, yeah, this was a really cool book back in the day. There is a new series out. I believe Dynamite is putting it. I've been putting it in my review videos. I've been reading it. Really good. Picks up right where this series left off. So I grabbed issue number one. I was also able to find issue number two. That's a really cool cover. I like that. Issue five. Issue six. Issue number eight. What year did these come out? Oh, 1986. Just dig at the old covers on the back as I flipped them over, all the old adverts. Really neat. <clears throat> and issue number 11. Those are all the ones that I found. There might have been more in there, but I didn't have time to go through the rest. I only went through about half the stock in that store and I was there for three hours. So next time I go, I'll have to go through the other half. Then also I picked up a Max number one. This is another one of those books. God, I'm a sucker for it. Every time I see it, I have to buy it. And then number two as well. I don't even know how many copies of these I have now. Probably five, maybe six. And issue number three. Oh, let's dig into some indie books here. Here's some the indie titles that I picked up. And again, I love Poison Elves. Oh, this is such a fun series. And this is issue number two. Came out under Cirrus. Oh, and then also number 11. 
I actually got a nice run of poison elves here. <laughs> Number 12. And these are mature books. <laughs> Number 13. Number 14. I might end up rereading these and then doing a little retro review on them. Number 15. Number 16. Teddy bear. <laughs> 17. And number 18. As you can see, I actually found a nice run. So I was really happy with that. All right, so that's the first little stack. Pop these back in the box and grab the next one. Oh, I see what the next one is already. The next one is a really nice run of Adam Polina X-Force books. Uh, these are a When I was collecting comic books back in the 90s, this is what was coming out at the time absolutely love these books. I love the stories, I love the artwork, and I no longer have them, so I was really happy to find them and replace them. So, let's start at the beginning. We have number 44. This is when Cannonball was drafted into the X-Men, or he graduated into the X-Men, leaving X-Force behind. Number 45. This was a really good story. Uh, at this time, Sabretooth was almost in a weird kitten-like comatose state being cared for by the X-Men after Wolverine popped his claws into his brain. And Caliban comes to kill him for what he did to the Morlocks. Really good story. And then 46. It's funny how I'm giving a little review already on some of these. 48. 49. Hey, and this is 51. This is when Boomer finally changed her name. She started out as Boom Boom, went to Boomer, and then by this time she started calling herself Meltdown. And now she's actually back to Boom Boom again. And number 52. 53. Like I said, I really love the artwork. Adam Polina's work was really, really good. What number we got here, and... Do, do, do 54. I was able to pick up two copies of 55. And then 56, I believe. No, I'm sorry, 58. We actually skipped 56 and 57, apparently. I know there was one book in here that is missing, and it's the, it's the Deadpool Siren cover. She's in a like a psychiatric hospital, and she calls Deadpool to come break her out. And, you know, of course, with anything Deadpool, the spec is real. And 64. Like I said, I was really excited to find these. Really glad to have them back. 65. 66. If I'm not mistaken, nowadays, Adam Polina is making combs for mustache? <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm pretty sure Adam Polina is actually making I'm, I think I have the right artists because I know one of these guys did from back in the 90s. And number 69, so that's my good X-Force run right there. I was really, really happy with those. And you know, like I said, 40 cents a piece, couldn't beat it. All right, let's grab the next stack here. And we're going to start with Captain Harlock, Death Shadow Rising, number one from Eternity Comics. I love anime, and I love manga, so when I see this, I have to pick it up. You'll actually see several uh, anime and manga come through here as I'm going through this box. Um, I may even have missed some. We shall find them. All right, now I got a nice little run of Hulk here. Picked up 396. <clears throat> 395. 
377. It's a cool cover. I've always loved that one. 390. 363. A lot of fun. Gotta love Hulk comic books. And next up, we have a Tales of Darkness one half from Wizard. Actually has the Wizard Mylar. Doesn't have the certificate though, but still. Cool. And we got a couple of nice Cerebrus books. We have Cerebrus High Society, issue number 26. And what we got here? Cerebrus 101. And Cerebrus number 56. I love this crazy, like Wolverine parody. And we got Lethal Strike number one from London Night Studios. And Strike will, be, I believe, will be making an appearance in the new Razor movie coming out. And Dirty Pair number one of four. This is from Eclipse Comics. And Dark Souls, Legend of the Flame. Number one. I heard this Dark Soul comics are pretty good, so. <clears throat> and I picked up a couple Nausicaa books. Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. And these are all Miyazaki. Like I said, I love anime and manga, so I couldn't pass this up. And I have another one here. Beautiful books, absolutely beautiful artwork. I love Miyazaki. Absolutely amazing. And then I found a couple of these guys. The Fathom Number no. 1 Special Reserved Edition. I had never seen this before, but apparently it was a pretty cool variant. And they had a bunch. So, I bought them. Alright, so let's pack these guys back into the box and pull the next stack out. Next up, from Midnight Massacre, Night Stalkers number 10. I had to grab this. I just love this cover. I remember having this before. It's so neat. It's almost like an envelope with an invitation. It shows you the entire series. Well, the entire storyline. All right, and then Battle Chasers number two. I love Joe Mad's artwork. Again, this is because of a product of the 90s. You know, reading these back in the day. Absolutely always adored his work. It's one man I'd like to meet that I have not met yet. And Curse of Spawn, number two. And Jim Starlin's Breed, number one. I have two copies of this book, the regular cover, and I also have a gold edition and a platinum edition. You had to collect these crazy stamps and send them in. The gold stamp program. And here's the stamp. And the more you filled out, the better books you got. Breed, Power and Glory, Edge, Dreadstar, and Star Slammers. Bravura was Malibu's creator owned imprint. Uh, I have the entire first series. I want to read them again and then do a review for you guys. All right, Zen, the Intergalactic Ninja, number one, Star Quest. Again, love Zen. Insects, number one. Rune, number two. I'm a huge, huge, huge Barry Windsor Smith fan, so when I see Rune, I cannot pass it up. If I see anything Barry Windsor Smith, I cannot pass it up. Here is Firearm number two. Now, while this month was going on during the Ultraverse, they all had this cool back cover. There was like 13 or 14 of them, and they all connected together and formed one giant rune picture, so that's kind of cool. 
Smiley, the psychotic button number one. Again, I'm a huge Chaos fan, so I really, really love Smiley. I love Evil Ernie. My one and only comic book related tattoo is a Smiley, a Smiley the Psychotic Button. A little bit of trivia about me. And also, Empress number one. Now, this book actually has a little bit of heat and spec to it, so I was kind of shocked to find it in the, the dollar 40 cent bin. So I paid 40 cents for this. Second copy now. Red Wolf number one. I believe this is a variant cover. It's worth a few bucks. Bizarro number five. Really, really, really gaining a whole new respect and appreciation for Bizarro, so I had to pick that up. Bloodshot number one, again with this cool chromium Barry Windsor Smith cover. Thundercats number one, a really cool Art Adams cover here. The Lethal Foes of Spider-Man number four, it's the final issue. I'd never seen this before, had no idea what it's about, but you know, it's Spider-Man, so figure I might as well get it. Arkham Asylum, Living Hell, number four. And that is a crazy awesome cover. I'm assuming that's supposed to be Killer Croc. Wow, just crazy, I love it. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, number one, from Boom Studios. And I grabbed two copies of that. Surprisingly, this is a good read. 52, week one, it starts here. Prime Infinity. I'm a huge fan of Ultraverse. I really love these guys. Uh, it has some great stories, it really unique storylines, great characters. Had a lot of fun with it. So when I see a lot of Ultraverse, Ultraverse books, I have to pick it up. Men of Wrath, issue number one, from Jason Aaron and Ron Garney. You know, you can't go wrong with that creative team right there. The Tenth, number one. It's actually the only issue of the Tenth I've been missing, so that was kind of nice to find that. The Omega Men, number 29. Chastity, number three, from Chaos Dynamite. Again, Dynamite picked up all the old Chaos books after Brian Polito had lost them. And they're kind of trying to put them out. I think the only one they're doing still is Evil Ernie. I'd like to see more Chastity and Purgatory come out. Nova Special, number one. American Vampire, The Blacklist, part one. I've been meaning to read a lot of these American Vampire books, so it's cool to find a few of them. Hellblazer, number 63. Zero Hour, A Crisis in Time, number four. I found a Hawk and Dove, number three. Lobo, Infanticide. This is book four of four. Grayson, number eight, from the new 52 storylines. And number nine. Cyberforce number four. That's just a cool cover. And with the relaunch of Cyberforce, it's piquing my interest in some of these older books. Man, I love that. God, the 90s were awesome for gimmick covers. And speaking of gimmick covers, Clive Barker's Ecto Kid. This whole Razor line were uh, curated by Clive Barker back in the day. I believe these are glow in the dark and then it's all embossed and shiny. These were everywhere. Uh, yeah, 1993, and I never read them, so I figured, you know, I saw it, I might as well grab it and give it a try. Hey, and then Pit number one, this is another book. Man, these old image titles, I just cannot pass them up when I see them. That's why I have two. <laughs> the Strangers, number one. We're getting back into my little Ultraverse stack here. And then Solitaire, number three. Solitaire number two, and Solitaire number one. Actually, who is the artist on these books? This man, this artwork is actually very cool. Bear with me a moment. Hmm, just says Jeff Johnson. All right. 
you know, some of these early Ultraverse books had some really good artwork to them. Some of the artists actually went on to do some really cool things. Like uh, Mantra was Terry Dodson. All right, and then we have Sludge number two. Sludge number three. Oh, this is actually Aaron Lopresti. And sludge number one. And again, there's the, for that month, there's the center section of Rune's mouth. Pretty cool. Now, let me grab the next stick. start going through these a little bit faster pace just because I have a lot left and this video is getting kind of long here all right so young blood number three it's a cool book the United States of murder Inc that's a Bendis book so I really wanted to check that out Jupiter's legacy number five amazing spider-man number six Go. Marvel Tales number 74 with the Prowler. This is a nice cool old book. 76. Good stuff. We've got a Sandman, The Wake. This is number 70. Love these old Sandman books. Men of War number 12. And I bought this because of the Joe Kubert cover. I love Joe Kubert. Man, the guy is amazing. Of course, he only did the cover on that, so. Adventures of Superman number 500, Back from the Dead. I'm not quite sure what's going on with that cover, what they were trying to accomplish. It's like there's another picture underneath, and they layered this thing on top with an arm. Weird. All right. The Savage Dragon versus the Ninja Turtles number two. Powers, number one. Again, another Bendis book. And I was able to grab two copies. Harley Quinn, number 16, from the New 52. <clears throat> we have a Silk, number six. I'm just a huge fan of Dave Johnson, and that's a great cover. This one I was kind of shocked to find in there. A Turok, the Son of Stone, number 128. Tell me that isn't a little bit of insane. Look at that. I don't know. They're an old Turok book for 40 cents. Can't pass that up. All right, Outcast number 11. Outcast number 14. And here's another series that I've never read and always wanted to give a shot. Number seven. And this was kind of fun to find. Orphan Black number one, Helsinki. Great TV show, so I figured I'd give that a shot. And then The Book of Death, one of four from Valiant. And then they also had two of four. And three of four, so that was kind of nice finding those. Shadowhawk, number three, or the third series, number one. Cool. She number five. This is always a beautiful cover. A man called Axe from also the Bravura line. So it's creator owned. Hard case number one. Looks like two copies in there. And then a man called Max Axe One B. So two different covers. On that one. All right, so that's the next stack. All right. Okay, we will get through the last of this. All right, final stack. I do have another one of these boxes, but I think I'm going to do that in a three parter because this, like I said, it's getting a little long. I apologize for that, but. I need to space this out a little more evenly next time. So, the next book up, Sleepwalker number one. Yeah, this is a book here I'm going to retire on. <laughs> the 
the uh, I think the artist Blevins. He's really, really amazing. Such a great artist. Yeah, Brett Blevins. Really underrated. Good stuff. All right. Then we have the New Warriors number forty. The New Warriors number fifty. You can't see this, but a lot of this is very textured. Oh, there you go. I believe it's because it glows in the dark. So cool. Man, I love gimmick covers. New Avengers, 1959. That's very interesting. Issue number 10. New Avengers, Dark Rain, number 54. New Avengers Siege, number 61. New Mutants, number 70. Necrotia, number one. It's a one-shot. Moon Knight, number nine. Hellhounds, number one from Image Comics. I've never seen this before, so I figured I'd grab it give it a shot. The Amazing Spider-Man Learning to Crawl 1.5. If I'm not mistaken, that's a beautiful Alex Ross cover. That's not Alex Ross, it's a hell of a copy artist. <laughs> and then Secret Wars number three. But well, what's cool about this is this is actually the front cover. Beautiful virgin cover. New Mutants number 49. New Mutants 31. We're getting into some of these older Sienkiewicz covers and stories. Number 23. Number 64. And then we have a Stormwatch number 0. And Shaman's Tears, number one. Now, these are one of those books that back in the 90s was always in a grab bag. And I think it's because they just didn't sell very well. And I never read it. I never gave it a shot. And I'm like, you know what? I am going to pick this up and I'm going to read it. And we're going to find out what this all is about. And then we have a Savage Dragon, number three. A Lucifer, number 68. Lucifer, number two, Dave Johnson cover. Hard case number two. Actually, another hard case number one. That's three copies I picked up. Wow, such a weird person. <laughs> the Damar Annual, number three. The Normals, number five. Baby Teeth, number five. And I love Baby Teeth. If you've been watching my reviews, you know how much I enjoy this book. I don't believe I have this cover, so I grabbed it. Animosity Evolution, number one. World's Greatest Ghost, week three. Dark Horse Presents Tomb Raider, number one. Who is Thor? Number six. And Ghost Rider number three. John Burns Next Men number one. And John Burns Next Men number four from IDW. That one, the other one's from Dark Horse. Nightman number one. A Distant Soil, number eight, from Warp Graphics. If you ever read Distant Soil, it's absolutely amazing. I believe this is Colleen Duran. Yep, Colleen Duran, Script and Art. It's absolutely amazing. Such a good story. Couldn't pass that up. Then we have New Warriors, number 25. And again, with the gimmick covers. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Uh, Superman, Wonder Woman, Justice, number 19. This really interesting Harley Quinn cover. And Adapt or Die. What is this? Venus, one of four. Great cover. It's a 
Beautiful. I love that. Next, number one. I bought this. I never heard anything about it, but I bought it because it's Black Mask. Everything Black Mask has been incredibly good, so I figured I'd buy it and give it a shot. Coffin Hill, number one, from Vertigo. Cable number nine. Coming up against Omega Red. Showcase 93, and this is Two-Face, part of the Nightfall story. Wildcats Adventure is number one, and this is the comic book based off the cartoon series. And we had a Bloodshot number two in here. We had number one earlier. And then we have a number three. And we have Death Meets Silver. Oh, this is the prologue, actually. Jim Lee cover, so I couldn't pass it up. Lucifer number 69. Walking Dead number 144. This is one of those books I never kept up on a lot, but I pick up an issue every now and again just to read it and see how see what it's like. I really enjoy them. Exo Man of War number 12. And last but not least. Lone Wolf and Cub, number 13. This was another really, really good series. So, anyway, that's my huge stack of books. This is the second part. I will put a link down below to the first one if you guys haven't seen it. I Maybe I'll put a little ending here and show it's here somewhere. Anyway, um, like always, thank you for watching. You guys are amazing. Love the likes, love the shares, love the comments. Just, I'm having so much fun with this. It's really, really a good time. I do have another long box that I need to go through. I've actually had it sitting in my office now for a year and a half and I haven't touched it so I totally forgot what's in there. Anyway, that'll be much later though and I'll probably do a three-parter on that. But anyway guys, like always, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the little CB to subscribe and then the little bell up there to get my notifications and like always, thank you for watching and take it easy.